I'm new to using dongle DAX outside of the $10 Apple one that everyone uses. But recently, I've come across two more expensive dongle DAX. First, the iFi Go Link for $60 and the DEW4X from SimGot at $80. Now, while comparing all three, I really only found two reasons as to why you might want to upgrade from the $10 DAC to the more expensive ones. And I think you're going to be surprised as to whether or not a difference in sound is one of those reasons. Now, all this started when SimGot sent me the DEW4X dongle DAC for review. Now, I'm not being compensated for this review and all opinions are my own. To be honest, this actually started when SimGot earlier this year sent me the EA1000 IEMs for review. Now, this was my very first pair of IEMs, and I thought I really shouldn't pair a $220 pair of IEMs with a $10 Apple DAC. Now, that's why I invested the $60 in the iFi Go Link instead. So while preparing a review of the DE4WX, I thought it might be more interesting to compare all three and try to determine if it makes sense to spend $60 to $80 on a dongle DAC or just use the $10 one by Apple instead. Now, I originally thought that going from a $10 Apple DAC to a $60 to $80 would provide a difference in sound. And that was where I was first surprised. Now, I don't know what DAC chips are used inside the Apple dongle, but the iFi Go Link uses one ES9219 Sabre chip and the SimGot uses two C43198 chips. So my first question was, do these dongles provide a noticeable sound difference since they are all using different DAC chips? Now for this test, I use my EA1000 IEMs provided to me by SimGot, along with the Sennheiser HD560S headphones that I bought a few months ago. Now, if you have hard to drive headphones or IEMs, I can't speak to how they will perform with this same test, but I'm hoping to pick up a harder to drive pair of either so that I can do some further testing down the road. Now, I wanted to point out real quick, I use this test on Apple products. Android users may have a different experience. I believe that if you pair this Apple dongle with Android uh, phones, especially that the volume may be very weak and you have to download an app to get the volume back up to where it should be. So if you're an Android user, uh, just keep that in mind that everything that I was testing here was all on Apple products and not Android. Now, using my IEMs, I listened to a few different tracks, including the song These Words by Megaphon, which has sort of a Radiohead meets Bon Iver meets My Morning Jacket vibe. It's got a lot of electronic bleeps and blurbs and sound effects that are happening in the background behind some haunting, folky vocals. I really didn't expect the cheaper Apple dongle to pick up the same amount of detail and all those sound effects that were happening in the background, but in fact, it did, just like the two more expensive dongles. In fact, I really didn't hear that much of a sound difference between the three dongle DACs when listening to this track on my IEMs. Next, I put on my Sennheiser headphones and listen to the song Turn My Camera On by the great band Spoon. Now, halfway through this song, there's this very faint sound effect. It sounds like tape rewinding. And to be honest with you, I never noticed this sound effect happening when just listening to this song a million times before, be it in my car or streaming to my home audio system or even on a CD. Now, when I first heard this with the more expensive dongle DACs, I thought there's no way that the Apple DAC, well, again, will pick up this amount of detail. And I was wrong. I was able to hear that same sound in the same manner that I was with the more expensive dongle DACs. Now, all of this is to say that I couldn't hear that much sound difference between the $10 DAC and the more expensive DACs. Now, there were times when I was really struggling and thinking there's got to be a noticeable difference between these more expensive DACs and the cheaper one when listening, and I just couldn't hear anything. 
And whenever I get to that level of listening, where I almost feel like my brain is trying to purposely find something to hear, that's when I really back off and think there's probably not that much difference, especially to your average consumer who doesn't listen to as much audio or as many different products that I do. So knowing that they would probably listen to all three of these and say they sound exactly the same, that's when I knew that, again, the noticeable sound difference between these three just wasn't there. Now, since I started reviewing DAX, I've had a lot of commenters say, in all caps, all DAX sound the same, like a definitive statement that every single DAC sounds the same. I don't believe that to be true. I have listened to many DACs at this point and have heard different sound signatures between the two, especially when using them in a home audio setup. So what I actually think is the result of listening to these three dongle DACs in this manner is that the old adage of you gotta spend more to get a more noticeable difference is coming into play. These are all very close in price. I mean, $10 to $60 is a big jump, but the $60 to $80 DAC is fairly close. And again, they're all under $100. So I think if you are looking for a dongle DAC that's gonna drastically change a sound signature over say a $10 DAC, then you're probably gonna need to spend a considerable amount of more money, maybe in the couple hundred dollar or higher range. Now, I don't have any experience with a dongle DAC of that price range, so I don't know if that's exactly true or not. Hopefully, maybe I'll be able to get my hands on one and run this same experiment and find out if it's the same. Now, here's a more important part of this video. I started out saying that there were two reasons why you might still want to upgrade from the cheap dongle DAC to the more expensive one. And I still actually believe in these reasons. I just wanted to point out that I don't think that sound is necessarily one of those reasons. The first reason for me is simply power. This Apple dongle DAC, when using my IEMs, I was able to get it to a very loud listening level, just like I was able to do with the SimGot and the iFi Go Link. So there was no issue there. However, when I was listening with my Sennheiser headphones, the Apple DAC just couldn't get as loud as the SimGot could. And I just noticed that it was, I could get it so much louder with the DE4WX, which, you know, I don't need to listen at that loud of a level all the time, but it was definitely better to be able to get to that level when needed. Whereas with the Apple, it always just seemed to fizzle out. So. I would say that depending on what pair of headphones you use, a dongle DAC like this could be a benefit because you're gonna need that extra volume that's just not provided by the cheaper model. The second reason you might want to upgrade to a dongle DAC like the SimGuy is pretty obvious, but I wanted to point out anyway, and that is simply, even though it's not making a major difference in sound, you're gonna get some added features over the cheap dongle DAC and that for instance here you get PCM playback and DSD playback and even MQA if you are still a believer there it also offers you a volume knob uh, volume buttons here on the side of the deck so you can control the buttons here rather than on your phone now actually with the sim got when you press these at the same time you can adjust between a low gain level and a high gain level just something you can't do with the iFi Go Link or the cheap dongle DAC, obviously. This can also be used as um, USC a 1.0 so that you can connect it to other devices like mobile gaming devices. And lastly, one more feature with the SimGot that you're not gonna get with the other two DACs is that it's got two output connections here. You've got a 3.5 millimeter single-ended and you've got a 4.4 millimeter balanced output with the iFi Go, you're just getting 3.5 and obviously with the apple DAC, you're just getting 3.5 so if you've got headphones with differing output connectors the upgrading to something like the sim god will give you the ability to connect uh, a variety of headphones whereas the other DACs simply cannot so in short, those are the two reasons why I would suggest someone would upgrade
from the $10 DAC to the more expensive $80 SimGot DEW4X DAC. Again, for me, it wasn't so much the difference in sound as it was the power and features that a dongle DAC like this provides. Now, as I mentioned earlier in this video, the whole reason I got started with this dongle DAC experiment was thanks to these EA1000 IEMs that SimGot sent me for review. Like I said, these were my first pair of IEMs ever. If you'd be interested in learning about my experience, my first time using a pair of IEMs and how these little guys performed, you can do so by watching this video here.